improvement. So a look at what's going on uh, in the market in general uh, and to cover off what we're seeing with some of the clients that we're consulting with uh, and then look at a way of breaking through some of the confusion uh, that's out there and uh, uh, getting traction with uh, reinventing uh, performance management. So uh, let's get straight into that and uh, take you through how uh, we think you can ace uh, your performance management transformation. So the first thing is, uh, it's not new news, for about a year now, uh, there's been a lot of coverage in the press and uh, clients like Gap and Microsoft and Adobe have been, uh, Deloitte's have been the poster children of this transformation from traditional performance management and annual reviews uh, to continuous feedback and, uh, and coaching. Uh, but the market's sending mis mixed messages about that in several areas. Uh, the first area is around ratings. Uh, and so neuro leaders, David Rock being the, the predominant one who's taken a strong position on rating are saying that these are dangerous. They're the worst thing that could uh, that you could do, uh, and that they trigger a threat response that's long lasting with the employees. And most people uh, feel aggrieved by their performance rating, um, and that's regardless of whether they're high performers or, or poor performers. Uh, it's a it's a no win situation, according to to David Rock. On the other hand, CEB, who've got years and years of, of data behind them, are saying that um, performance of employees drops by about 10% when you remove ratings. And they're saying that only 5% of managers are, are actually capable of managing uh, performance without a, uh, a rating system uh, to fall back on and without some way of making a comparison between one employee to the next. And so polar views on ratings. And we certainly would say that if you're gonna remove ratings, then there are things that you need to do with your management team to equip them to have conversations that are not ratings based or um, even, you know, some organizations have said, yes, we've removed the ratings because we don't use a one to five scale anymore we use terminology instead. If you're going to put people into categories, that's rating. Uh, if you're not going to do that, managers need some, some help uh, in the alternatives. And by the way, as Karen said, if you've got comments or questions as we go through, please put them in the chat box. I'll keep an eye on that as we go uh, and uh, try and respond to that uh, as, as comments come up. Area of, of mixed messaging is around how to deliver uh, performance conversations. And uh, Georgia Murch is an Australian uh, lady who has written a, a pretty good book called Fixing Feedback. It's very popular um, down here. Uh, it's definitely worth a read. But Georgia's position is face to face, or as close as you can get to face to face, is the way to have these coaching conversations. And that uh, it needs to be personal, it needs to be one-on-one, -on -one, needs to be private. Text, social media, messaging, et cetera, fall into the dangerous category, or as she describes it, epic fail. On the other hand, CB again are saying, actually, it doesn't matter the medium for the messaging. The most important thing is that it's as close to real time as is safe for the recipients. And so course not in a public forum private um, and, and confidential conversation but through any channel that you can use to get that message across as soon as possible after the episode event or observation took place be that face-to-face -face, video email instant messaging uh, a written note whatever it takes timeliness is the critical thing as far as CB a concern. And then when it comes to frequency, uh, there's great diversion of, of thought in this as well. So the American Management Association uh, are recommending to their members that when you're moving from an annual process, then 
actually a quarterly process is more than good enough. And that will take the average manager from spending one hour per employee per year, which seems, you know, devastatingly low to me, uh, to, uh, you know, a uh, gigantic four hours per employee per year of discussing performance and goals. Now, Gallup are a little bit more uh, uh, aggressive than that. They're saying that uh, their data proves that engagement's highest when you have a conversation per week uh, or more frequently than that. And that. Depending on the demographic of your workforce, there's actually quite a bit of evidence to say that uh, particularly millennials uh, benefit strongly from uh, very, very frequent feedback. So daily check-ins, half, an, you know, five minutes uh, is enough, uh, half an hour, that kind of thing, uh, but more formality at least weekly. And Carol, I'm just reading your um, note there. So you're saying you're in the process of rolling out online system does end with face-to-face -face conversation. Okay, which is good. Uh, it's annual, but can be updated during the year. So perhaps uh, moving in the right direction there, but certainly in terms of timeliness, AMA and Gallup would both say that you need to augment that system uh, of annual, uh, an annual cycle to something more frequent. And we're going to cover off that in a little bit more detail with the, with the 4A framework. So what we've been finding is that because there are so many experts that are talking about this and because the views of the experts are so divergent and that the evidence of the experts seems sound, organizations are asking, well, who's right? What should we do? Uh, and in the absence of a blueprint, uh, basically doing nothing, sticking with the status quo, uh, is happening more uh, than we would like to see and more than is beneficial to, to the employees because everyone agrees that the old way of doing performance management doesn't work and so something needs to change. The disagreement is around exactly what that change is. And Sean, I'm seeing there, remote management is definitely a challenge. Digital tools uh, certainly need to, to play a role there. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, the, the good old standby of the, the telephone as well in that situation. Uh, and even, you know, there, CEB would say email communication is not perfect. And you certainly need to be careful about construction of emails if it's around feedback. But it is better than nothing uh, and better than delayed feedback. So uh, some things to think about there. So the inconvenient truth uh, of, of this is that one size fits one in this new era of performance management. And whilst organizations are looking for a one size fits all type of approach, there, that isn't the way that this is playing out. Uh, the, the organizations, teams within organizations, microcultures are all needing to be um, tailored towards with the, with your performance management approach. Uh, and so, Carol, yeah, nice shoes. I thought with it being Christmas, uh, we'd, uh, we'd give this presentation a, a little bit of a party flavor uh, and get some, uh, get some good shoes in there. So we've got more shoes coming up. Uh, but one size fits one means that we're in an era where we really need lots of different approaches rather than uh, one single approach for an entire workforce. And it's more true depending on how multicultural, multi-generational and uh, multi-locational your workforce is. So the answer to this, we believe, is to make room for tailoring, uh, to engage people by configuring an approach that fits them down to the most granular level that you can. And so if, if you can do this down to the individual level, then that is the best case scenario. But if that's not realistic in your situation, then being giving some room for 
managers uh, throughout your structure to be able to localize, tailor, personalize, customize uh, your approach uh, is really uh, the, the magic formula. Now, of course, from a management perspective, standardization is easy to measure, it's easier to roll out, it, it's, you know, um, simplifies training, uh, we can uh, compliance check against it, we can audit against it. So uh, that means that, um, you know, the, the proposition of tailoring and different approaches can make things more complex. And this is where the 4A framework comes in. So what we are, are really uh, advocating is a back to basics approach. Uh, when we've spoken with clients about, you know, what are the fundamentals of performance management? Uh, and, you know, throwing a little bit of marketing in here to get all A's, uh, we can characterize those uh, with the, the four A's that you see here. So alignment, assessment, assistance, and appreciation. And really those questions around, are we doing the right things? Are we doing our best work? What would make us stronger and looking at strength-based coaching there rather than um, filling in weaknesses? And are we valued? So is the work that we're doing meaningful? Uh, and uh, are we uh, being appreciated for it? And so just kind of leave that up for a minute and, and ask if there are other aspects of your performance management systems that you think might sit outside of this 4A structure, and then we can kind of try and work in, you know, how, uh, how it would cover those areas uh, as well. So if you have things that you think, okay, well, that doesn't really do it for me, let's get those into the chat box and, uh, and see if we can uh, kind of, uh, you know, weave those in. Okay, not seeing too much there, so that's good. Um, and Carol, I think it's you was saying you're in a team spread over four factory sites, have a weekly catch up, uh, which is great. Uh, and um, particularly in uh, manufacturing, uh, that is a fantastic approach because uh, we'll talk about it at the end, but one of the benefits of very regular uh, feedback and check-ins is a very large decrease in safety incidents. And so I'm not sure if you're measuring some things like that and trying to correlate them back to feedback frequency, uh, but certainly there's, there's evidence to say that the more frequent the feedback in a factory setting, uh, the greater the reduction in in safety incidents so covering alignment which is good um there's three a's uh that you can uh you can introduce as well uh and you probably find that you know if you start to have a look at those um you'll um uh you'll be able to adapt fairly quickly um so sean said is there a loop back to continue to get better so I think we'll cover that. So if we don't, uh, as we go through, uh, let's get that up again at the at the end. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna look at all four A's, but as robots take over hu human roles, how to balance meaningful work. So um, actually participate in some future of work forums where we're talking about robotics and um, and that next week. Uh, and if there's time, we can we can touch on that as well. Certainly in our product, we're seeing that feedback from um, robots uh, and feedback to robots is actually going to become something of relevance in the Internet of Things. Uh, and as, uh, you know, robot automation uh, takes a hold. And so human to robot interaction, we think, is going to be something that needs to be built into the feedback, uh, the feedback loop. So with, within the four A's, what we're basically seeing is that uh, there isn't one frequency. So you can't say, okay, we're going to do, uh, do our process weekly or monthly or annually. 
uh, as actually multiple frequencies that you need to work across. And so uh, though they, those will vary based upon your organization, but we think the first step in transforming from an annual process to a, to a more holistic and, and regular process is choosing some of those frequencies. And again, that might be applied across the whole organization or it might be across, um, it might be specific to work groups. And so in the absence of you know, anything, our recommendation is that quarterly alignment conversations um, would normally be sufficient unless you're in a particularly fast moving area where there's lots of volatility and the direction uh, of your uh, your organization is changing, then quarterly alignment's usually enough. Monthly assessment is, uh, again, a long enough period to elapse for there to have been some noticeable change from one assessment period to the next. And that assessment might be uh, a self-assessment. It might be a self and manager assessment. It might be peer assessment. Uh, and it also might be goals based or value based or behaviorally based. And so there's lots of variations in flavor um, of approach as well as uh, frequency of approach. Assistance is one you can't really set a frequency around uh, unless it's to check that, uh, you know, people are getting the assistance that they need and they're not blocked or stopped or stuck. Uh, but appreciation is probably the one that I'll, I'll highlight most. And that is where we really feel that you can get the most engagement through a change and that continuous appreciation of the small things, noticing the small things that are done well uh, and, you know, privately recognizing those we're seeing is, is a, has a huge beneficial impact. So step one of rolling out the 4A framework is to, to recognize that different conversation types, uh, different aspects of the framework will have different frequencies. And then to think about, you know, which frequencies are going to uh, fit your organization best. Uh, and, you know, the shorter the, the wavelength, the more frequent, uh, the better is usually the case, uh, but without overdoing things, it's very hard to go from, say, an annual process to a monthly or weekly process in one step. You might actually graduate towards this as you um, as you embark on the journey. The frequency is, is one thing. What that leads you into then is a calendar. And we're seeing most organizations that are having success with agile performance management are working to some sort of uh, calendar. Uh, Jan Hills did a webinar yesterday, which was really interesting around threat and reward responses. And she spoke a little bit about um, feedback and performance management and the, the usual threat. And one of the things as part of Jan, who's, who's the uh, leader of Head, Heart and Brain, so brain savvy leadership, one of the aspects of brain savvy leadership is certainty. Uh, and that's the, the C in the core framework. So a calendar actually gives certainty to managers and to staff of what is gonna happen uh, in what time frame. And it also gives certainty to HR and executives as to, um, you know, something is happening uh, and it's something that's observable and measurable. And so your calendar might not look anything like this example. It's just an example to, to illustrate uh, that a calendar would be useful. But if you picked the cadences uh, that were shown in this diagram, then that would leave, lead you to a calendar like this, where every quarter you are doing some alignment around goals uh, and that that might be a cascading process or it might be a bottom up process or a middle out, you know, that the actual method um, can vary. Uh, and continually you have a focus around appreciation 
and then periodically or episodically you're doing assessments. Now, um, I did throw in a couple of extra things into this diagram to show uh, that this is, you know, the, the approach here is no longer a HR driven or a, uh, a cascading approach. We'll, we don't work so much in hierarchies these days. You'll know we're working in networks, virtual teams, remote teams, and so on. And so trying to push something through a hierarchy is tricky, uh, especially with changing goals and alignments and the like. So what we uh, see as being good practice in, in the alignment space is, yes, have some alignment around goals or values or purpose or mission or behaviors. So whichever paradigm you want to pick. But you also need to check that um, from the grassroots level uh, that your people are aligned to the organization. So not just the, the mission uh, of the organization, but the culture of the organization, the current direction, the state of play, the, uh, the climate of the organization. And so alignment, as much as it's about you know, manager-led process, is also about listening uh, and pulling in the pulse uh, of your team. And similarly, assessment, it might be about, uh, you know, progress in the work or progress towards mastery of a skill set or progress towards a purpose. But uh, particularly uh, with the millennial uh, generation, uh, continuous learning and continuous development is important. And so uh, it's important to throw in some aspects there around assessment of the individual and uh, their progress. Are they making progress towards their purpose? Are we creating uh, through leadership and development an employable human being who you know isn't just being molded into a role um, against a competency framework or a, a job description, but is being molded uh, to be uh, and supported and nurtured to be you know, the best human based on their um, their own in integral drivers and their own uh, integral purpose. So um, assessment towards, you know, the, the individual's purpose we've thrown in there as well. And in terms of appreciation, we think of that as intrinsic. So, uh, you know, gratitude, thanks, uh, praise, um, uh, recognition, uh, but it also goes into compensation. And so specifically in this calendar, there might be periods where you've got a compensation focus to, to appreciation. Uh, and that might be, you know, an employee's total deal rather than just salary. So it might come into bonus incentives and the like. So once you have the, the 4A framework, you've worked out some frequencies and the types of conversations that you want to have, then really there's a whole bunch of different alternatives towards the way that you can execute that. Um, and coming back to that CEB um, story about only 5% of managers being able to manage in, in uh, the absence of ratings, then this is where you can really start to support those managers and teach them new techniques that are not ratings dependent. Uh, and so there are, you know, tens, if not hundreds of different templates that are, that are out there. Uh, we have some uh, that I've suggested uh, here that are, uh, you know, if you want a complete out of the box solution, this it this w could be it uh but if you want to to customize and tailor then uh you know really it's a case of looking at okay the alignment process how do we want to do that traditionally it might have been cascading goals uh you know more these days we're seeing okrs the way that google uh kind of set goals and, and manage progress it might have been kpis some alternatives to that that are emerging uh, are things like purpose matching. So 
Uh, Sean Murphy uh, is a, a US writer who wrote a book called The Optimistic Workplace. Uh, the philosophy of The Optimistic Workplace is that if you can match a individual's you know, life purpose to the organizational needs and marry those two things together, uh, then you know you get a massive uplift in engagement, discretionary effort, uh, tenure, uh, advocacy, and, and all of those good things. Of course, purpose matching is quite hard, and, and my experience is quite a lot of people don't actually, if you ask them what their you know their life purpose was, they w- they wouldn't be able to articulate that. It's not top of mind, and so if you're going to move down that path then you know strength uh strength discovery tools uh some introspection uh are all things that are precursors to to taking that alternative path an easier one is values and behavior a little less so if we think about goals and kpis they usually focus on outcomes and quite often they're ill-conceived because they focus on outcomes that are way beyond an individual employee's sphere of control. And so, you know, regardless of whether the employee did a brilliant job or a, a poor job, uh, the outcome of the uh, of the measure of the goal could have been totally different. So it has very little to do with the employee in, in reality. Different spin on that, value or behavioral based um, alignment. So basically saying if uh we do um uh if we all follow the same value system and we all follow the same type of behaviors uh then those behaviors and those values will lead to the outcomes that we're seeking and and sorry leone i missed a question there so i'll just come back to that then is asking uh what is an okr uh, it's a framework that's been used by uh, by Google. So it, it was introduced or invented by Google. It stands for objectives and key results. And so it sets objectives and key results at an individual level over quite a short time frame. So typically, instead of having um, six or seven goals that last all year, uh, with an OKR system, not only have one objective and key result for a period, and that you know is something that you would be laser focused on uh, for that period or until that objective uh, and key result's been realised. So uh, an OKR might go for actually a long time. Someone at Essential was telling me they've got an OKR where the period was three years. But for that three-year period, that objective was the only thing that they were being measured on. So they had, you know, absolute focus on on just one thing. Um, so anyway, uh, regardless of whether we want to use OKRs, goals, purpose matching, value, behaviorally led, then, you know, it's important that everyone knows they're doing the right things. And the stats around this are disappointing. I think it's something like only 18% of employees uh, have confidence that they know what's expected of them at work. Uh, And so there's lots of room for improvement on that. Now, I've got some uh, templates here, and you may all know um, what these templates are. So I definitely don't want to go to each of them if you're, you're already familiar. So... Tell me in the, the comments box if you want to look at the templates or if it's enough that we just kind of talk about them. But um, the uh, six question process is by uh, Marshall Goldsmith, uh, who's uh, quite a famous uh, US coach. And it's basically a two way uh, alignment process. So it records a conversation between really a coach, but in this uh, paradigm, we should think of every manager as being a coach and a a person being coached. Uh, And it basically, there are six questions to run through uh, to get those two people into alignment with each other and into a mutual agreement with each other about how their coaching relationship will, um, uh, will, will unfold over time. 
So I'm going to jump into the, um, the templates quickly because I'm just seeing some people are saying, yeah, they'd like to have a look at, uh, at a, a few. So um, I'm not sure if you can see that too well. Uh, actually, now, uh, now that I've just done that, I don't know if I can make it any bigger. Um, not sure if that's bigger for you. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll go through the process and, and I can send these out after the event. But basically, the first question is, where are we going? Um, OK, so you're saying you can only see the pick and mix slide. I'm, I'm, OK, let me give it a moment and just see. Okay, well, well, maybe since the templates aren't showing, we'll just skip over that. Um, oh, okay. You can click onto it. Um, so if you click on the six question process, okay, well, that's the way we'll do it. If you wanna have a look at the templates, have a look at the templates. And if you have any questions um, as we go through, uh, then all you need to do is click on the template. There's a big pink back button and that will take you back to the pick and mix slide. So let's, let's do it that way, okay? So the quick six question process by Marshall Goldsmith basically says, um, where are we going as an organization? Where, where are you going as an individual? Uh, what's going well uh, in the organization? What's going well in your area of the business? How can we improve? How can I help? How can I, as your coach, improve? What are the two, one or two things uh, that I should focus on? And what are the two, one or two things that your team uh, or organization or you individually should focus on? So we've got six questions there. Basically, there's two sides to each question, which is around, as a coach, this is the direction that we're moving in and how do you feel about that? And then as someone being coached, uh, how can I add most value to you? Uh, and the end result is two people should be, you know, on the same page. Assessment, uh, are we doing our best work? So uh, a big kind of area of agreement, actually, amongst all of the uh, performance management um, kind of brains trust uh, is that the way that we assess has tended to be focused on weaknesses and the past and the way that we need to assess needs to be based upon the future and focusing around strengths and so whilst there's lots of disagreement around the way that performance management should change this is an area of um, you know general agreement uh, that we should be focused on uh, building up uh, the existing strengths of individuals rather than trying to um, round out every individual to an average level across a, you know, a competency framework or something like that. Uh, and that we should be doing that, uh, you know, very, very regularly and looking at uh, events and observations to say, okay, what happened? How could that be better in the future? Not what happened, what went wrong, uh, and, and having an introspective around that. So um, in assessment, really, there are a, a few different perspectives that, that need to run through. Obviously, um, there's a lot of stuff around rate of bias and the fact that, you know, when it's, um, one person gives another person a, a rating or an assessment that that has more to do with the, the rater than the ratee. Um, and we think to overcome that, uh, a, a large emphasis on self-assessment uh, is, is useful. You might combine that with manager assessment uh, and certainly a lot of the evidence now is that self-requested episodic feedback is actually the most useful to individuals because generally we know or we have this feeling uh, that, we perform, that we didn't perform to our best or, or that we could do better. And if we have that feeling, having the tool set that says, okay, well, I can get some people to 
um, comment on that. You know, tell me whether it is or it isn't um, uh, reality. Uh, so we're sometimes hard upon ourselves and then help coach me through you know, improving in that area. If I can do that of my own volition, if I've got the tool set to help me to do that, then that's the most um, effective way uh, for me to, to manage and grow. Um, but of course, at some point in time, a manager needs to have a view and whether that's a view that is shared with the individual or it's just fed up the organization, um, really depends on your philosophy and your approach. In Deloitte, uh, they have made the change. It's that their process is continual conversations and then a manager assessment only. Uh, and that happens periodically. It's based around four questions. And the questions are, if it was your own money, um, would you recommend that this person receive the maximum pay rise and incentive uh, based upon their performance? Uh, based upon their performance, would you always have this person in your team? Uh, and those that are rated on a scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree. Uh, and then two yes, no questions. So only four questions, two yes, no questions, um, which are around, um, uh, is the person at risk of poor performance and is the person ready for promotion? So very simple manager assessment there. Assistance, so assessment really is the core of all of this and everything else sits around it. Assistance is really around coaching. I think most of you would have heard of Sir John Whitmore's GROW model. It's very effective uh, to support coaching conversations and continual feedback and to provide um, you know, uh, ownership back to the individual uh, and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, and Karen, that, yeah, that one comes up a bit around performance results balanced with behaviours, uh, and particularly in sales. I think you might all know about Wells Fargo, uh, where a focus on performance has certainly led to some bad behaviours and uh, a mis-selling there. So there's a balancing act, uh, and no reason why you can't have uh, a mix and match approach to this, like uh, Karen's suggesting, where you're assessing against performance and you're assessing against behaviors and making sure that high performers are also responsible corporate citizens. Okay. Uh, and so, assistance really about making sure that we take our managers forward and, and enable them to be more. Uh, consultative and coaching managers than um, uh, than line managers and, and process managers and appreciation are we valued you really cannot appreciate people enough and we really don't appreciate people enough and so a whole bunch of things you can do there crowdsourcing peer-to-peer -peer feedback is very good doesn't cost very much and it creates a good level of collegiality and also um, uh, it takes some pressure off the, the manager to always be uh, the person uh, looked upon to be uh, managing performance. So thank yous, gift certificates, lots of things around appreciation. So once you've rolled out something, this is agile performance management. It isn't going to, you're not going to get it right first time or you're very lucky if you do. And so the way to get it right is basically to measure everything. And this is not measuring just activity levels like we're used to or measuring uh, compliance like we, we traditionally have. It's measuring things like sentiment, looking into the feedback and seeing what the overall climate of the workforce is. It's looking at network analytics and looking at the relationships that people have with each other and how that's changing over time. Do you have some in-groups, some cliques? Do you have some out-groups, some people who are marginalized? Um, the more frequently that you um, uh, schedule in your calendar feedback events, feedback activities, the more uh, visible uh, the, the actual patterns of behavior in the organization become. And so uh, actually, whilst a lot of people fear that if they lose the ratings, they lose... 
uh, knowledge capital. The opposite is actually true. If you increase the frequency, you've got much more knowledge capital to base uh, HR decisions on the, than you ever had before. So measure everything and be ready to adapt. And so what we've found over time, and, and we've been doing this for about a year and a half now in terms of having our product, is that um, the products that support this need to have these six aspects to them. So self-requested, real-time, scheduled and recurring feedback, manager requested, shared team, team level feedback, and anonymous feedback. They need to have those um, capabilities because different people respond to feedback in different ways and, and basically having the ability to adapt you know, uh, is totally dependent on having those features in, in your tool set. Uh, and so with the measurements, they will give you insights that tell you what you need to adapt. In terms of why do all of this? Well, mostly it's to wow your leaders and your peers with results. And so uh, these are, you know, the, the things that people do agree on is that there are massive benefits from, from changing from the traditional to an agile approach. Uh, you can read them there, but ongoing uh, episodic feedback increases performance by 12%. Uh, coming back to that uh, safety um, issue, 70% fewer safety incidents uh, with organizations that have high employee engagement through continual conversations versus organizations that don't. And 69% of employees would work harder if they felt their efforts were better recognized. So that's really coming back to that appreciation aspect of the, the 4A framework. And then uh, just in terms of wrapping up, um, it also is a measurement system. And so if you start to think about you know, your, uh, your process in terms of the four A's, what you might start to see is that you're doing really well on alignment, but you're doing pretty poorly on appreciation. And so that tells you, you know, where to focus, where to introduce some new, new um, activities into your calendar or where to increase the, the cadence of that. You might find that uh, you've got a pretty good level of assessment going on, uh, but that it's very skewed and, and that, uh, you know, you've got a lot of um, leaders who are very um, negatively focused and, uh, you know, would, would be better off to, to have a more uh, balanced view. And so you can start, start to then target areas within this 4A framework to say, okay, we need to lift our game around assessment or we need to lift our game around appreciation and the other aspects of our process are going well. So it's a, it's a journey. If you would, if you found this useful, then that's great. Uh, and I, I'm very glad about that. If you didn't find it useful, then I'm equally interested in your feedback of how we can approve, uh, improve, uh, and to give me that feedback this is my feedback link. So this links to my feedback profile. Uh, and this is my feedback ID. If you would like to follow up and drill down into anything, then as always with these sessions, I offer to anyone who participated a, a private one on one. Uh, and you can uh, get my email address from here, uh, drop me a line or just use my feedback ID and, uh, and we'll pick it up from there. Uh, and so I want to thank you for uh, your attention today and the questions. And uh, I'm being asked if we'll share the slide deck. So, of course, that's, that's no problem. There'll be a replay as well. Uh, and so you can play this back. Uh, and as I said, if, uh, if anybody would like to drill down further, then we're passionate about this topic and, and would love to you know, talk more about it at, at length with you. So thanks again. And Karen, I'm not sure if you're going to wrap up or how we end yep. this, but um, um, yep. I'm Perfect. finished. Thank so. you.
Thank you, David. Um, as David said there, we'll make sure we get this sent out to you today with both a link to the recording and also with a copy of the slide deck. Um, and I'll make sure I pull out David's contact details there. Um, they're a little bit faint, I can see, on this slide deck. So I'll make sure you've got those so that you can get in touch with him directly. Um, and as always, if you've got any feedback for us at Shorebird about the content or any future subjects, Checks that you'd like to see, um, then please do get in touch with those. Otherwise, thank you very much and um, hope you all have a great day.